The content in this video was created for documentary and educational purposes only, so if you're not 18 or older, shut it off right now. And if we disappear, go to CannabisLifestyleTV.com. So if you got a plant that's struggling, maybe looking a little yellow, a little wilty, or isn't growing as fast as it should be, it potentially could be sick. Now in this video, we're gonna go over exactly how you can revive those ill plants. Stay tuned. So if you're not a subscriber, I don't know really what you're doing with your life, but go ahead and hit subscribe and the bell next to it. Uh, if you're on YouTube. If you're on YouTube. If you're not, you're already a Gromy and you've already subscribed at CannabisLifestyleTV.com, clearly. Dot com. Or watch CLTV.com. Same thing. You want to support this channel, that's what you do. This video is brought to you by Plant Revolution. Big shout out to our sponsors there. They're the makers of Great White, Orca, Michael Chum, and King Crab. Make sure you check them out at PlantRevolution.com if you want to get your roots right. So, if your roots aren't right, it could be a variety of things. And one thing I've noticed a lot of times when people see some yellowing up top or some stress up top, that usually comes from overfeeding. Now you'll notice more on burning tips and the leaves are getting a little bit more potentially burnt looking towards those ends. But oftentimes that can be related to your roots being stressed out, oversaturated and overdone with the minerals and the salt up in there. It's easy to overdo and it's not so easy to undo when you overdo. This is true. When you overfeed or overwater your plant, it can really stress it out even worse than not necessarily feeding or overwatering your plant. So there is that obvious buildup of nutrient development within that root zone and just within that medium. And so it's really a balance of reviving your plant and treating it um, with a couple of different ways to yeah. help it. You've got too much food in the medium when you're adding too much in there, whether it be cocoa or soil. In that sense, you're gonna be having too acidic of roots and that root zone is just, just way too much in there. So oftentimes what people will do is flush their plants. And this is the only time that I really will say flushing is mandatory. A lot of times flushing for harvest, it's preference, totally preference. Again, probably more bro science. We got a video coming up on that soon. But overall, you're gonna to wanna to flush that plant out. You get the gist. That way you can get the minerals more rinsed out and you, you're able to balance that pH and stabilize your root zone in there. You have to give yourself a kind of from zero, a jump start. So flushing allows you to do that, but again, it's a balance. If you've already overwatered or overfed your plant, you're gonna have to allow it to dry out before you attempt to then flush it. If that uh, pot is still heavy or wet, you have to allow for it to dry before you just flush it, unless you see an immediate you know, decay of a plant, because then hitting it with more water can also do some damage. Yeah, again, oversaturation of the roots could be an issue. You end up running into things like root rot, or again, oversaturated roots that aren't getting enough oxygen. You get into that case, you will have to dry out that medium more, but if you're dealing with something like an organic run, you don't want to kill off that microbial life. So you don't want to go too dry in there, but you want to get to the point where it's not just sopping, soaking wet like a sponge. I've been there before and it could definitely be an issue, but if you go the opposite way, it could be more of an issue than you were initially. If the roots and the microbial life dries up, you're not going to have any food or anything to be able to bring the food up into your root zone. So that's going to stress your plant out and, and could potentially kill it. So the fine balance of not over drying before you go about this process can definitely be beneficial. If you're dealing with things like fungus gnats, it's also another time where you're going to want to dry out that medium more. Oh, uh, I fed my plant yesterday. Now can I hit it with a flush because it's burnt? Well, no, you got to wait a day or two. Yeah, well, and that's where once you, after you flush it, you're going to want to go back to feeding your nutrients. And usually you start low at like one third strength, then move up to half strength and gradually back to full strength. The plant's going to tell you what it wants. You're going to see it more, whether it be toxicities or deficiencies. Just know the damage that's already there that's brought from that initial stress is still gonna be there. Unless you remove that foliage, it's gonna kinda be hard to tell if it's getting better or worse. And obviously be sure when you go to re-feed your plant with those half and quarter strength doses that they are well within the pH range so that you don't get out of whack again. Other issues that you can be seeing yellowing or stress in that top area of the plant from root damage are things like your plant being root bound or not getting enough oxygen to those roots. So. Oftentimes what I would do and what most people would do in that situation is transplant. Now when your plants are already root bound, you probably should have transplant a little earlier than you did. So what I recommend and what I always do is I powder the shit out of those roots with some great white. That's just <laughs> that's my go-to. It works really well and I'm able to get that root zone inoculated. So that way it's gonna be stronger to fight against the pathogens, bad bacteria, and also have a better uptake of the nutrients. So always, every time that's what I use. Big shout out again to them. Check out plantrevolution.com if you wanna get that. Got it on Amazon, local grocery store. Yeah, it's very well known, um, very accessible. 
usually. And um, kind of expensive, so make sure you use it a little sparingly in that sense. Maybe yeah, don't, maybe I, don't powder the shit out of the roots unless you got it like me. Baller alert! Got a customer to pick some of that up. I obviously told them the difference between something like a cheaper version of the Micro Rizy, let's say, and um, we'll just say that. why <laughs> Great White, you know, has like the upper hand, especially when it comes to beneficials. And then also just to sparingly use it because I understand like, you know, most growers are on some sort of budget and it still is concentrated and works well enough that you can use it in that sense. I use it primarily when cloning and transplanting. So I use Orca and different things throughout that. So you can do that to spread it out as well. Um, and then use Microtrum to feed all that that you're putting into it. Uh, but yeah, it definitely is a key when it comes to transplanting for me as well. Yeah, and, and oftentimes when you're dealing with that root stress, another thing that you can use, a good supplement or a product I've used in the past is Super Thrive. That can help uh, reduce the shock in transplant. I believe it's a vitamin B supplement. Pretty affordable. They got it at almost any grocery store. I've seen it in like every garden center since I was a kid. You can Google it. It's worth a Google. 1979 or something. Yeah, that's OG shit, but it works real well. Another tip that I have is after I transplant or if I'm dealing with some root stress is I'll do some defoliation so the plant has less you know, basically work it's gonna to have to do to keep that top area alive. It can focus more energy on the bottom. And because of that fact, a lot of times I'll try to do this when it's younger, so avoiding that root bound issue is key. Sometimes people will go right into the larger pot to avoid it. I oftentimes will start smaller and work my way up, but mm. make sure you hit it early on. You don't wanna, you don't wanna get caught up. No, it happens though. I'm just chuckling because I have a couple of Wi-Fis that are growing through some plastic pots right now. Yeah, it might There's some say. roots that are just hanging out in saucers, which, it's not ideal, but I'm in flower, so it's too late for me. I just, that great white's too damn powerful, I suppose. Yeah, it's good props, I guess. So the next sign of stress that you could be seeing based on the roots of the plant overall could be pests in the media. Gross! Now, years ago, I had a horrible run-in with those little bastard root aphids. I didn't know what it was <laughs> for the longest time. I thought I just had deficiencies. I'm like, man, is it maybe a nutrient lockout? Is it this, is it that? I just, I wasn't sure. You know, eventually I was able to see and identify I didn't have fungus gnats, they were root aphids. And unfortunately I got those in the media when I purchased from the grocery store, they just, the way that the distributor had the, the soil stored was not ideal. You ruined it. But with those root aphids, you know, really the, the thing that sucks with that is you're watering your plant, you know, pretty consistently. I was dealing with soil at the time, so I wasn't watering too crazy like I was with cocoa, but I was basically helping that system of trash survive. Instead of my root system, it was more of the aphid system. So that's where the problem can lie with either gnats or aphids. Any pest really can just suck energy away from your plant. That's, I mean, if they didn't do that, I don't think that many growers would really try that much to get rid of them. Um, that's kind of the difference between a pest and a beneficial predator bug or whatever have you. Root aphids are bad because obviously when we're talking about the root system or the root zone, they're gonna be sucking up all the energy from that base. Others are spider mites and aphids and thrips. Regular aphids, not just root aphids, yeah, yeah. can suck uh, energy away from your leaves and your plant overall so regardless when you're feeding your plant through your root system you're really feeding the pests so it's it's a kind of tumultuous battle um, if you don't have good health or pest free living in your garden yeah and another way to combat this is potentially drying out your media again not too dry because you could kill off that microbial life the thing that a lot of people use is diametaceous earth I always butcher the word. If I did, take a dab. DE is just what I call it. You could sprinkle a little bit of that on the top of the media, covering that area up. So if they come flying out of there, they're gonna they're gonna die. They're not gonna make it. Problem is, a lot of times they're still gonna be underneath in the media, so they could live on. So drying out that media a little bit and using that as well works. There's also BT bacteria. You can also use that to combat them as well. Now these are gonna be things that aren't as common that you see in the grocery store. DE definitely is. I've seen diametaceous earth everywhere. You can get food grade even, or yeah. Wherever. Um, that works very well. It's but a little thick though, um, for me. I mean, I usually would spread it around my garden, not necessarily in my pots. You definitely can. I've done it outside. It's just inside, it gets a little messy. Especially if you're gonna water, it's like all of a sudden you added a huge layer per paste. Per yeah. paste. Yeah. <laughs> so again, be careful. Don't overdo it in that sense. But you'd rather do that than kill, you know, the plants. And in some cases, you may want to just kill those plants off and start over. We got a video that covers kill it or keep it. Right. It's a tough subject. It's one that some people will, will argue and it's with. Also but preference, man. If you you're running organic, obviously you don't want to kill off your microbials, but if you're not running organic, if you're running some sort of synorganic or cocoa, you could use like hydrogen peroxide to try and kill off some things within your root zone as well at a obviously diluted rate. 
um, but it's gonna kill everything because it obviously doesn't discriminate against what it kills. Yeah. But it will kill. It will, <laughs> it will kill. Kill. Kill, kill. kill. Just know, just I mean, you you got that far in the garden, you don't want to freak out. Like you want to be able to to t -t -t today, Junior. Tackle things properly. We got videos that cover things from pests, diseases, issues from feeding, whatever you need. CannabisLifestyleTV.com. Check it out. Also over on our YouTube channel if you're watching there. But yeah, if you like videos like this, smash that like button. Show your support to us. That's the best way other than being a member of the 420 Goers Club or a premium member of WatchSealTV.com or getting some merch. So... Is that it? Is that it? And as always, stay, stay lifted. lifted. So if you're some sit back, mm -hmm. salt up in there. <laughs> up in there. <laughs> up in there. <laughs> When I transplant, I got you. Don't ask this thing, man. I'm just, I don't have an ashtray over here now. Oh shit! I'm just a dick. I'm an asshole. Yep. I'm just like standing here, like, okay. <laughs> what do I do? I take a bet. <laughs> yeah, it's good probs, I guess. Or bad probs? Good probs. Problems. Good, good pro. Good, not bad, but yeah. problems. You get They'll it. They'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs>